What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2022 Subaru BRZ. Huge thanks to Subaru for providing me here with the opportunity to review the new BRZ here for you guys today. So about the all new second generation BRZ. Well, I think it's a really nice look up front here. You know, they did a really nice job of making it a little more elegant looking, I think, uh, but also making it still more aggressive. And actually today is my first time ever seeing this car in person. And there's a lot of stuff that really pops that you don't really see on pictures as much. I mean, so you have even this little BRZ logo here in the corner of the headlight. I also love that grill. They reimagined that grill. It's kind of a similar theme to the before, but you see how it has those parts that kind of jut out. And I never even knew it had that here on this new one until I actually got up close to it. It actually gives it a lot more aggression. I also love just all the dimensions you have going on here. Like you have a little bit of a front lip, but then it kind of blends into the body colored look here uh, whenever you go towards that air vent there in the front. And that air vent is also really cool. They said they actually learned from shark skin. Um, so you'll see that little pattern you have on the outside of the plastic there. That actually helps with aerodynamics just a tiny bit as well and there's a ton of attention to detail they really you can tell they went 110 percent with this car with how well they thought through everything so of course that vent is functional it does uh, help with the airflow here coming onto the wheels and then you'll see there's also another functional vent on the fender here and that kicks right up into these side skirts which also sweep out and help with airflow as well and uh, it's a really cool look too in addition to just being again very functional you can tell they really obsessed over the arrow in this car so i mean you even have those little spats there on the rear wheel wells and then you have those little arrow curtains there also even on the taillights i mean there's all these little things so they help to really smooth out the airflow here in this vehicle to help it mostly to have better stability that's their goal with all these arrow changes to help it with the handling and especially the stability both in straight line and whenever you're you know cornering at speed i also really love this darker blue color although of course you can still get in world rally blue thankfully there's just none here on this program for us to shoot but they actually added an inch of length to the vehicle which is cool it's also 0.4 inches lower so they really kind of stretch things out a little bit you also have a 0.4 inch wider rear track i also love in the back there how you know you now have the license plate that's now down in the lower part of the rear bumper instead of in the trunk lid uh, and actually that was one little thing they did to help lower the center of gravity just a tiny bit more i also love how the reverse lights there also kind of mimic the boxer engine layout another cool little touch there and uh yeah, I mean, just some nice exhaust tips there in the back, although I do wish those exhaust tips came out towards the end of the rear bumper there. They kind of stop a little short. But other than that, I think it's a really great look out back. I really actually like those taillights too. They have some extra dimension to them that you might not be able to notice in pictures, but uh, you know, they're a little more complex looking than just the flat look that they might have on the pictures there. And I think just in person, this car looks really, really good. And uh, I think they did a great job on improving the styling. Right, so for the interior of the BRZ here. So they made a lot of really nice improvements here for the 2022. I think they made all the right improvements. And I also love that most of the main things are standard features. So whether you go for a base model, the premium, or you go for the limited here, both trims give you most of the stuff that you want. It really just comes down to, do you want the Alcantara or cloth? And do you want heated seats or non-heated seats? Um, there's a few other little differences, but I mean, those are the main ones here on the interior. Um, and so first off, yeah, sitting down in these seats, I really like these seats. So I like that the Alcantara is perforated now, which helps a little bit. Although we were out on the track and it was pretty hot and I still feel like these seats don't breathe great. I'm just not a huge fan of Alcantara seats in general, but also these seats are completely redesigned. So they're lighter than the old seats. Um, and they also actually did a bunch of very advanced analytics on these seats in order to reduce the pressure points. So it puts less pressure on your lower back than it used to. And basically everywhere on your body that you're coming in contact with the seat, there's less pressure. It spreads that that force out a little bit more. So these seats should actually be a lot more comfortable, especially on longer drives. So that is one really awesome thing. The bolstering has been improved, all that. So a completely new seat and they really put a lot of thought into these seats and I really like them a lot. And here in the Limited, they are again heated. And if you're someone who doesn't like the red stripe here on the seats, if you go for the base cloth seats, you still do have the red stitching on the sides, but you don't have the red stripe here in the middle. Um, so a little more subtle with that black cloth on the base trim. Um, and the base cloth, it's a more slippery kind of cloth it's not a very coarse cloth it's nice and smooth and uh, I really like this uh, base seats actually but anyway moving on to the steering wheel here in the BRZ it's a really great wheel as well I love how you have the red stitching continued here and uh, just you know your usual buttons here like you're expecting 
Honestly, I'd be fine not having all the source buttons and stuff on the wheel, but you know, at least it's not too cluttered, so I still really like this wheel. Um, I also do love that you still have the cruise control on a stock instead of on the wheel, because that does reduce some of the clutter here, so you don't have a ton of buttons on this wheel. Um, also, this one being the automatic, you also have the adaptive cruise control button here um, for your distance, and then also you'll have the paddle shifters here on the automatic, which are nice. Uh, they're plastic, but they have this cool like gunmetal kind of look to them, and they're perfectly placed. And also, the 9 to 3 grip is also so nice here in these nice tiny little 10 and 2 notches but I just like that the wheel isn't super thick or anything it's a nice actually very thin wheel I think it's kind of refreshing with the trends that all these other car companies are going with these days I really like that this is nice and thin and so really great steering wheel the gauges here are also another thing that are standard so you have this smaller little uh, digital portion here on the right hand side there that's just uh, monochromatic there but on the left hand side there it's the color and it's a really nice display I love how you have the tack front and center nice large speed readout you know nice and simple there I also love how you know you have your usual trip information and uh, it is nice to also have um, you know your voltmeter and stuff like that but then you can also see that there is a G meter there as well as a little like dyno graph which will show you where you're at as far as your you know, power and how the engine is producing that power and then you also do have a lap timer there and then the usual stuff it'll still if you want to just show your audio information your safety information stuff like that you have all that in there and uh, you know I think it just gives you all the things that you need there nothing you don't and I love that and uh, if you do want a little bit of a more exciting look to that gauge cluster you can even go up to this track mode you can also program in a shift buzzer so you have a little beep that you can put in there and it'll actually make that part of the tack yellow whenever it's going to start warning you if you want and so that's a cool little touch too also here in the automatics you have a snow and a sport mode which you do not get those modes in the manual uh, the manual just gets track and regular and so in the sport mode you also get this little red ring here and the snow mode just gives you a little snow indicator there in the bottom and that's it but I really love these gauges. I think they're perfect. I also love how it also echoes that boxer engine layout again. Coming over to the center of the dashboard, another thing that's fantastic, all models get this eight inch touchscreen infotainment system. They all get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's not wireless, but at least you have that integration, which is huge. And even like satellite radio is still standard. That's another thing that some companies make you go up to the top trim in order to get satellite radio. Not here in this. Same infotainment system on both the base and the limited here, and that's awesome. And uh, you know, I really like this system. I think it looks a little prettier here than Toyota's version, which is a lot just flatter. I like how you kind of have the stars in the background there. And, uh, you know, just basically, you know, does all the basics, but I love how you still have a volume and a tune knob as well. That's something that's getting more and more rare in cars these days. So it's nice and simple to work, and I have no complaints whatsoever. I like how you have the little hard buttons there for, you know, different shortcuts as well, which is great. So you can dive right into CarPlay or Android Auto with one touch of a button. And so very well set up with all that. Coming down to the climate controls here, it's also standard auto climate control, both in the base and in the limited here. That's a really nice touch as well. And uh, I really like how they restyled these. So you have much nicer materials than the previous generation, um, which are really plasticky. This is still plastic, but you have this like knurled look to it. So it kind of looks like it could be metal until you touch it and you realize it's plastic. But I mean, you know, again, we're talking about a vehicle that starts under $30,000 as a sports car under 30 grand. You can't expect any kind of luxury experience in here. But I mean, having the dual zone climate is really great. I also love the little temperature readouts right there in the knob. So it kind of saves some space there, keeps it nice and simple. And then just some nice large buttons down here to control all your other little uh, you know controls for the climate. And so wonderfully simple and straightforward. It's also worth noting in this area, you'll see there's an engine stop start button that is also standard on both base and the limited so there's no way to get a turn key anymore um, it's all keyless access keyless entry push button start and then moving on to storage spaces here in the BRZ they did a really good job with that for the amount of space they had to work with here I think so um, in the doors here you have you know a little pocket by your handle and then also a bottle holder which is great over in the middle here you'll see that in the automatics you have this extra little cutout kind of like a cup holder you don't get that in the manuals so that's one important thing to note otherwise in the manuals and here in the automatics all you have here is just this center armrest and so in there you'll see two actual cup holders as well as two usb jacks and an auxiliary port in there great to have those and also this armrest by the way i like how it splits in the middle and it's pretty nice and softly padded it's not the most expensive feeling material but it's soft and so to me i don't care if it's not premium leather as long as it's nice to put my elbow on i'm happy so i love that uh, the only thing i can complain about is that this is really loose and cheap feeling i wish this was a little bit tighter this is an early pre-production model so that could be improved with the production ones hopefully um, 
Um, but I also noticed the 86s were the same way. Uh, so I just hope that, you know, maybe that's a little bit improved for the production versions. But that's the only nitpick here is that that's a little loose. Otherwise, this is a really nice interior for the money. And then when you consider the performance and everything as well, I don't think anyone really can complain. Um, and again, I just love the fact that the base model is, I think, even the better value because you get all the same great standard features um, and you save a little bit of money there as well. Another thing you probably won't be too worried about, but I want to mention is the back seat here. So it is uh, definitely on the tight side. I'm five foot nine. I can barely fit back there, but you know, it's basically the same back seat as what you got in the previous generation car. I did use that back seat for shorter people, and sometimes I would have to just slide the seat forward and just kind of get a little closer to the wheel when I was driving. Uh, it works in a pinch. It's nice to have a back seat because a lot of other competitors don't even have one at all. You know, it is nice for smaller kids, things like that. Um, so I do appreciate that they still kept the back seat. It also does fold flat, so if you uh, want, the, you can still fit, um, you know, four wheels and tires, you know, mounted in the back there. If you want, you know, your track set of wheels and tires, you can totally bring those along with you here. Also, moving on to the trunk space here, that is another area where it's basically the same as the previous generation. You have a pretty small trunk. It's just very shallow. That's the main thing. So you can't fit anything that's too large through that opening because the opening is so small too. Anything larger than a carry-on size suitcase might be a little bit tricky honestly. It's not a lot of space. Now there's a, a decent amount of length to it and width. It's just again that opening is what really limits it and the limited depth. And again it worked for me for the couple of years that I owned my BRZ. It's just again you can't uh, pack a ton of stuff in here but at least you do have the back seat again so there's some extra storage space there as well if you don't need that back seat. But yeah so let's start up and go for a drive. The uh, BRZ here has a uh, Subaru's typical key, which is a nice key actually. It has this nice little metal trim on the sides and just a few buttons there. Not too big of a key either, which I do appreciate. And so, like I said, keyless access, keyless entry, push button start. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button, and it starts right up. All right, so setting off here in the 2022 BRZ. So uh, obviously I just have driven the GR86 about two weeks ago, so this all feels very familiar, especially compared to that. I mean, obviously on the inside and everything, uh, it's very, very similar. And that also goes for visibility. So visibility is still obviously identical to the GR86, but it's interesting. Uh, we actually got a little more info from Subaru here as far as the actual seating position for this vehicle. So, you know, the center of gravity has been lowered by a few millimeters, and um, they actually said that they brought the uh, seats closer together um, to actually help with the yaw of the vehicle and the initial moment of yaw and so it means that uh, you know they do all these little micro adjustments to make things just slightly better as far as handling and responsiveness and stability and so you probably won't notice that coming out of the old car into the new one but it's just those little details that you know they're able to pinch in the roof a little bit more and so it gives you definitely a unique feel compared to the old car even though there are a lot of things that are very familiar another thing I really love about this new 2.4 liter flat boxer engine here is that uh, you have a lot more torque now you know they said torque comes on 2700 rpm sooner than before so 3700 rpm is when you're making that peak torque of 184 pound feet and so it means whenever you're just kind of loafing around um, you know at around 3000 rpm or so it just has a nice pickup where the previous car just felt a lot more dead and uh you know, so it's really nice as far as that goes. It means it's a lot more daily drivable and a little less frustrating whenever you're actually trying to get moving. And, um, you know, as far as everything else goes, I mean, this is still, you know, a lightweight, simple sports car. So you still have a decent amount of road noise, you know, all those types of things. But, you know, you're not expecting you know, a ton of refinement in a vehicle like this. But, you know, you'll just notice, as you can probably hear on camera here, it's a little noisier than what you get with, uh, you know, some of the more heavy sports cars out there that might be a little more powerful. They've also improved the torsional stiffness by about 50%, they said, and so that combined with, again, the lower center of gravity and the retuned suspension and stuff means that, uh, you know, you have a vehicle that still is so direct and precise with its handling, and these corners aren't super intense. We will be going on the track later today, as well as on the autocross course, so we'll be able to kind of really push the handling, you know, in those two areas, uh, but, you know, as far as out on the road here, you know, it's still just very, just easy and confident and Subaru said whenever they were tuning the suspension, especially compared to Toyota, that Subaru just wanted the vehicle to do exactly what you're expecting it to do, and they wanted it to be uh, predictable, maybe a little bit more so than, Toy than the Toyota, which might be a little over-eager with uh, the way that that is set up. This, it's just, you know, supposed to be a little more direct. Now, I'm going to need more seat time. I've just been driving this vehicle for a few minutes, so really 
um, you know, feel out the differences between this and the GR86. There's a whole long list of things that change the spring rates, both front and rear. Um, there's different mounting points for the sway bars. Um, you know, they did a lot of different changes. Even like there's this has aluminum front knuckles versus steel front knuckles on the Toyota. Uh, so there's a lot of little changes here. And so I'm going to see if you know both here on the street and the track if I can kind of uh, pick apart some of that stuff and how it feels. Um, I think here on the road though, so far my first off the cuff impression is that it feels obviously very, very, very similar. I'm struggling to feel any differences that are really jumping out at me, but again, I will have to drive this a little bit longer and see. But I mean, it's still a really great driving experience. I mean, I absolutely loved the GR86 and this is just, you know, the same great goodness. You still have that active sound enhancement, um, which I really like. I think it actually adds a lot of nice growl to this engine. Also, it's worth noting that this one I'm driving here is the limited model, so that means we have the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires um, that are 215 all around, and so that gives you a little bit more grip. You can still get the primacy tires like the original BRZ. So if you're looking for that original formula of you know the more tail-happy back end, you can still get that with the uh, base model, which they call the premium here, um, but don't confuse it for the premium version of the GR86, which is its top trim, and the premium in the BRZ, it's actually the low trim. But we have a straightaway here, and no one behind us so let's do an acceleration real quick and see how it feels so, here we go <laughs> wheel spin all right still pulls really strongly all the way up to that you know basically 7500 rpm red line and uh yeah it feels great it's uh <laughs> It's, it's, I'm just, I love this power plant. They just fixed everything about the old one and I love it. So you have 228 horsepower, 184 pound-feet of torque, and uh, zero to 60 they're saying is six seconds now, um, which is enormous. That's a one second improvement over the old manual transmission car. And what other performance vehicle from one generation to the next gets one second full faster for its zero to 60? It's pretty rare. I mean, that's an enormous performance leap. The automatics are even of a bigger leap. Those actually went from an eight second zero to 60, believe it or not, to now a six and a half second. So those, it's an even bigger improvement. And honestly, there's actually been some magazines already testing these that have been getting in the fives for those zero to 60 times. So this isn't a slow car. You could argue that, you know, maybe it wasn't super punchy for the old one, especially again, if you caught it in that torque dip, but this car is not slow in any way. I mean, yes, if you're liking it in sixth gear, it's not gonna feel powerful. But I mean, aside from that, I mean, it's, it's punchy. It's just a vehicle that you can't be scared to floor it. You know, it's a vehicle you can actually floor it and not be immediately thrown in jail. It's kind of nice. Um, you know, you can just exploit the whole engine. There's a nice large power band, unlike most other vehicles these days where you have a red line of 6,000 RPMs or something. You know, this, you have that nice large, you know, power band and it's just, it's a lot more character with this engine. I really feel like this is kind of like the ND1 to ND2 Miata where they really improved that motor made it a lot more exciting. This is kind of the same thing. But yes, that's my first taste here out on the street, but I'm gonna hit the track in the autocross course now, see how it performs there, and then I'll come back and uh, finish up here back on the street. All right, so now I'm in the automatic BRZ here, and it's kind of cool to be able to drive the automatic on the streets here, because with the 86, I didn't get a chance to try the automatic on the street. And so, um, you know, I think the automatic, yeah, you give up a half second for the zero to 60, and obviously my pick would be the manual. Uh, this automatic is really smartly programmed. Whenever we were out on the track in the autocross course, you know, it held gears really well, especially whenever it starts sensing G and then you're going around corners aggressively, it'll hold those gears and it figures out without you even needing to do any kind of special drive mode as far as, you know, giving the vehicle an idea of what it needs to do. It'll just automatically figure it out, hold the right gear, and it works really well with that. Now, we can even try out the paddle shifters here. So there's a delay there. It's the typical Eisen six speed, um, you know. Yeah, it's sluggish. So it's it's not a great manual shifting experience, but I think if you just leave it in the drive mode, uh, you know, it's, it'll figure it out pretty quickly on its own. I think it's fine, but you know, clearly, I mean, I, I'm glad that they offer the automatic. I think for those who sit in grueling LA traffic or something like that, this can make some sense. You still have the same great, awesome handling and all that. Uh, it's just that you have a little bit less involvement, but you know, hey, I think anyone that buys one of these cars is buying, uh, is making a great choice. And so if you go for the automatic, I don't fault you, but I personally think the manual is probably gonna be a lot more fun. And like, I mean, we've already seen it's definitely faster in a straight line too. But I'm gonna go ahead and just do an acceleration here in the automatic and see how it does. Here we go. shift 
around 7,000. It doesn't go that last 500. But that's understandable because this actually makes peak horsepower at 7,000 RPMs. So that extra 500 is kind of wasted anyway, technically. Obviously, it's fun to still rev it out, but I can see why the automatic is doing that. Um, but yeah, so one thing though that I'm noticing here is that the steering is definitely, I think, a little lighter in this. It feels um, like it was a little heavier, and I feel like I felt a, maybe a little bit more through the steering wheel in the GR86 than I do here in the BRZ. Now, it still feels great. It still is really great direct steering. I mean, it has a very quick you know, steering ratio, very sharp. It's only two and a half turns, lock to lock. So, I mean, very, very eager to dive into a corner. But um, I think I'm just noticing, I, I feel like the steering felt a little more alive and just yeah I just feel like I, I like the steering a little bit better than the GR86 if I'm really again nitpicking here back and forth um, but that's I think that, honestly probably the biggest change that I noticed here on the street now on the track I definitely noticed that you had um, I think a little less tail happiness here in the BRZ it felt a little more neutral it kind of wanted to understeer a little bit whenever you were being an idiot and like giving it power in a corner too early um, versus the 86 it seemed like it would kind of want to rotate a little bit more and of course with the extra grip of the Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires, um, you know, it does have plenty of grip and, you know, that is going to hold back how tail happy this vehicle is, but even with those same tires on the GR86, I just noticed that it seemed to be a little bit happier to drift and also that whenever you were mid-slide, I found it a little easier to manage in the Toyota than in this. This was still very easy and honestly, I actually really like the sport mode here in the automatic because it, it kind of gave you a little bit more slip, but not quite as much as the track mode. And I kind of found that to be like a little bit of a Goldilocks whenever we were on the autocross course. Um, so I just, I think that at the limit when you're really driving like a Hoonigan, I think that the you know, GR86 might be a little easier to actually manage versus this, you kind of have to just drive the BRZ a little bit differently and you have to be a little more deliberate and really you know, like force it to do the slide. It still was tail happy. I mean, we're still talking about a very tail happy car, but it just, you kind of had to drive it a little bit with a little more intent of doing that. Um, so that's really the big takeaway I found. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to sample the Primacy version of the BRZ here. Whenever I drove the Primacy GR86 on track, that certainly, you know, is even more tail happy. So um, maybe, you know, if you go for a Primacy BRZ, you kind of have that Goldilocks potentially of having the extra tail happiness, but having a little bit more of the, um, I guess, confidence of the BRZ that you didn't get with the GR86 or the GR86 you know it just felt a lot more eager to to go crazy on you but um, I mean both are very controllable both are very friendly and fun driving experiences and both I think are excellent driving experiences for a especially someone who's wanting to learn real wheel drive driving dynamics I mean both these cars will bite back but you know I think that if you're using your brain here you know it's gonna allow you to have that fun and allow you to you know kind of play around with the back end there but uh, you know it just I think it's just gonna be a very good uh, learning tool honestly in this car I kind of cut my teeth with the rear wheel drive thing with my BRZ back in 2012 that I bought um, and I've been hooked on rear wheel drive cars ever since I think it's a lot of fun going back to you know a lot of people like to cross shop this with stuff like a Veloster N and some of the other front wheel drive stuff like a Volkswagen GTI and you know those are gonna be faster hands down and you know even as far as lateral group goes they might win out but uh, whenever it comes to just the feeling of having, you're sitting so much lower in this than you do in a Veloster N or a GTI, having that low hip point, having the super low center of gravity. I mean, they even said the center of gravity here is lower than it is in a Porsche Cayman. So, I mean, you're talking about those types of things you'll never be able to match in those hot hatches, which are economy cars that then are souped up in order to give you that sportier experience versus this being a purpose built from the get go with one mission with this car. I think it kind of just gives you a very, very different experience. Experience. Now, again, around a track, it might not be faster. It might not, you know, win in a drag race or anything. But from behind the wheel, it's just a very different experience. And I think it's one that's worth trying if you're an enthusiast, especially if you're someone who's always stuck with front wheel drive or all wheel drive stuff in the past. I think this can be a really fun new experience. And I think the BRZ is a really great way to try that out for the first time for someone that's wanting to get into the rear wheel drive stuff. Now, you know, we're just kind of cruising along here at 1500 RPMs on a nicely maintained road here admittedly but it's you know a pretty refined vehicle too so if you are someone who's wanting to daily drive one of these things you know it's going to be very comfortable still the seats are great with their comfort and uh, you know i just think it's a really nice little car to live with i mean i loved living with my first gen brz for two years and i mean this just improves it every single way but yeah if you're someone who enjoys going around corners and you have a lot of windy roads in your area i think that a vehicle like this is going to put a smile on your face every single day 
and it's definitely worth owning. The last two things I want to mention briefly are fuel economy and pricing. Interestingly, the BRZ gets one better MPG than the GR86 does for some reason, with an EPA rating of 20 MPG in the city, 27 on the highway, and 22 combined for the manual. That is a little lower than the previous generation, but I'm sure all owners would take more power over better fuel economy, so I don't think anyone's going to complain about that. And lastly, pricing starts at $28,955, including destination for a premium model with the manual and then the limited is $31,455 and that limited adds the ultra suede seats that are heated along with a slightly better stereo that goes from six speakers to eight and then driving wise it adds those 18 inch wheels with the sportier tires the steering responsive headlights that turn in the corners with you and blind spot monitoring if you want the automatic and that is going to be $1,600 more expensive but it does add the eyesight driver assistance stuff like adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist on both that premium and limited models when you go for that automatic so that's part of why there's a price jump there but honestly all the standard equipment you get for under thirty thousand dollars along with the performance of a true sports car with a very low center of gravity the lightweight rear wheel drive handling dynamics and the greatly improved straight line performance all make this a fantastic performance car bargain that deserves to be appreciated here while it's still around uh, but yeah, so that's about all of my thoughts. I'll definitely be doing a follow-up video once I get one of these as a press vehicle to live with it for an actual week and have more thoughts on my own back roads and stuff. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned for that video down the road. But in the meantime, this is a great first impression of the BRZ. Again, it's just a different character, just like the previous generation. They kind of were tuned differently. They went even further, I think, this generation, you know, with just swapping out a lot more components as well as doing the different suspension tuning and stuff like that. And uh, I think you can't go wrong with either one, honestly. They're both fantastic choices um you know just comes out of what styling you prefer what brand you prefer and you know kind of what experience you prefer and on the road here like i said aside from the slight steering differences that i picked up on i really don't notice a huge difference i mean i'd have to drive them literally back to back having two weeks in between them um, doesn't probably help but you know i think that they're both fantastic you can't go wrong with either one but yeah, so that's about all of my thoughts here. Let me know your thoughts on the 2022 BRZ in the comments below. Huge thanks to Subaru for providing me here with this opportunity. And yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.